Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Fitzy. I bought, I think, the best camera for 2018. It's the GH5. Here it is. This is the package. I will not do an unboxing. I will give you a first impression and I will give you reasons why I think it's the best camera for 2018. And yeah, let's first roll the old intro. Well, so this is the box, it's the GH5 4K, 60 frames. So this is the box, nothing special. Now let me show you the camera. Camera is right here. I already played around. So I had that camera now for three days now. I bought it um, in Best Buy with a protection plan and with a cheap lens. It's just there so that I can play around with the camera till my expensive lens comes. Um, I ordered a 7 to 14 millimeter lens refurbished on Amazon and I hope that thing will arrive today and it will be not like bad or anything. I think it should work completely fine. So I saved a couple of hundred dollars on that. Basically, this lens is basically just like a $99 lens and that is for, uh, it's from Olympus. It's a 40 to 150, so it's a Taylor lens, so for everything in the distance. So if I want to film my gator, I can film that gator and with that great image stabilization, absolutely no problem. Um, so far, I'm really impressed with this camera. Um, the handling feels really nice. The footage that I took with that lens, so everything is like really um, far away. So usually you see every shake with lenses like that. I have like the 55 to one, uh, no, the 55 to 210, I think, yeah. It's for um, E-mount and it's a Sony lens, but you see every little shake, like really extreme. Um, and you have to use image stabilization on the editing software and you have to use this and that. And yet just to make it usable, you have to do a lot. With this camera and this cheap lens that doesn't even have image stabilization in it or anything, it's still super smooth. If I zoom all the way out and trying to film something, it's bananas actually. I was not expecting that that camera is that great with image stabilization, but apparently it is. So that is good for me. And that is also one of the main reasons why I bought this camera for the great image stabilization and basically the handling too. And the main feature, what annoyed me the most about my Sony cameras is that you cannot turn the um, display the way around. Um, on the other side, it has also a couple features that I really appreciate. It's weather sealed. I live here in Florida. It's way hot and there's always rain or something going on, storms, whatever. And this is weather sealed. I probably could take this camera in the rain and it will be fine. On the other side, it has a flip out screen. What is now sounds stupid, but if you're low to the ground and let's say this is the ground and you go down with the camera and you want to take a shot, the Sony camera only lets you move the, if you have the camera in this, in this angle, you can move the display up so you can look on it. But with this camera, you can do the same thing and you can even turn it around so you see the whole display. By the Sony, you're just like limited to forward and downward and that is really annoying. Yeah, besides that, this camera doesn't overheat because it has a smaller sensor and the body is a little bit better laid out. And some people will say a smaller sensor is like a worse image quality or it's like not bright and all, all that stuff. In the end, it really doesn't matter because it's a great camera. If you view the images as they are, you have to really pixel peep and the most people, so the regular viewer, will not see a difference to like a full frame camera if they see something like that. Low light is good enough and usually you have to film anyways with good lights to get a good image. And overall, this is a high-end camera and my Sony A6300 is a really great camera if you put it on a tripod. <laughs> I missed so many shots in Hawaii. Um, I recorded for 16 days, everything was handheld. I could only use like one to two days of recordings. And it's really sad because the most footage where I got use, use of was from the GoPro because the image stabilization was way better with the GoPro. And I basically determined image stabilization is the greatest holdback of like uploading footage and basically setting up everything and figuring out am I'm in shot, am I like, is the lighting good? And with that display, I basically can make everything way easier because I just turn around and I will see it. 
yeah that is basically my first impression um, everything on that camera is like really nice you get like the HDM iPods USB um, C you get a microphone input and a headphone output the um, battery slot is dual dual memory where you can record on two memory cards at the same time or make one full and then the other one it's like so nice um, the battery slot is separate and it's just like a great camera I'm really happy with it um, the viewfinder for example it's really nice it's really big and what the most people probably not really know about but I have a Sony camera and I maybe got one update in one year or something like that and apparently Panasonic is rolling out one update out after another this camera I just got new I updated it so the autofocus should be fixed I'm waiting for my auto lens to show it because 40 millimeters is I have to go all the way away so that I'm even in shot with that lens I have to wait to my for my 7 to 14 millimeter but apparently it's fixed and um, I tested it in store and I was like impressed with the standard kit lens and with the other lens that is coming now it will be way better I guess but yeah so there's no holdbacks and I can't wait to use this camera now as my daily driver and basically sell my A6300 and all my lenses that I have with that um, I did not switch to the Sony a7 III because I saw some videos where they compare the image stabilization and even this camera is better in the image stabilization than the a7 III and it's like kind of crazy. I will link the video down below so you can see for yourself and if you see the two videos in comparison you, you would not be able to tell which camera is better from the image quality if you just see it on a regular YouTube video. You have to be really like specific, look out for it. And who does that actually? But for run and gunning, um, image stabilization is the go-to. So even if it's not set up, I want to be at least able to that you see, oh, there, there's a squirrel or there's a gator instead of like, oh, there's a gator, shake, shake. And I don't want to have always a tripod with me. A new camera, new me. So I will edit this video on the new editing software from Adobe Premiere Pro yeah cc i think it is called i don't know expect more from me i will shoot a couple comparison videos between those two cameras and you will then decide um what is better what is worse um i will also give you like what i love about this camera and what i hate about this camera because i already figured a couple things out so stay tuned subscribe to my channel and yeah support me a little bit with a comment because that helps the channel out a lot yeah the more engagement the better that's also why i have that clickbaity line in the beginning because not for everybody this camera is the best camera and it's always depending what are your needs and yeah sorry